Greetings on this fourth Sunday of Lent as we again gather together virtually as the people of God at St. Matthew's Church. Our readings today will accompany our message. This will be kind of an abbreviated worship service and I think that's the direction that we will be going over the coming weeks. We'll try to hit different highlights and try to continue our Lenten observances while also knowing that we are in the midst of a time when we are still together and yet apart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of water and for the grace you bestow on us through water. Send us your Spirit that we may be good stewards of water, gentle in our use of precious resources, generous in sharing what is needed to sustain life, conscious of how water connects global communities, and renewed in faith through your promises in baptism, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. You used to be like people living in the dark, but now you are people of the light, because you belong to the Lord. So act like people of the light, and make your light shine. Be good, and honest, and truthful, as you try to please the Lord. Do not take part in those things that are done in the dark. Instead, show how wrong they are. But the light will show what these things are really like. Light shows up everything. Just as the scriptures say, wake up from your sleep and rise from death, then Christ will shine on you. And a lengthy reading from the ninth chapter of John's Gospel. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who had been blind since birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Was it because he or his parents sinned? No, it wasn't, Jesus answered. But because of his blindness, you will see God work a miracle for him. As long as it is day, we must do what the one who sent me wants me to do. When night comes, no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the ground, he made some mud and smeared it on the man's eyes. Then he said, Go and wash off in Siloam Pool. The man went and washed in Siloam, which means one who is sent. When he had washed off the mud, he could see. The man's neighbors and the people who had seen him begging wondered if he really could be the same man. Some of them said he was the same beggar, while others said he only looked like him. But he told them, I am that man. Then how can you see, they asked. He answered, Someone named Jesus made some mud and smeared it on my eyes. He told me to go and wash it off in Siloam Pool. When I did, I could see. Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he answered. The day when Jesus made the mud and healed the man was a Sabbath. So the people took the man to the Pharisees. They asked him how he was able to see, and he answered, Jesus made some mud and smeared it on my eyes. Then after I washed it off, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus does not come from God. If he did, he would not break the law of the Sabbath. Others asked, How could someone who is a sinner work such a miracle? Since the Pharisees could not agree among themselves, they asked the man, What do you say about this one who healed your eyes? He is a prophet, the man told them. But the Judean leaders would not believe that the man had once been blind. They sent for his parents and asked them, Is this the son that you said was born blind? How can he now see? The man's parents answered, We are certain that he is our son. And we know that he was born blind, but we don't know how he got his sight or who gave it to him. 
Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. The man's parents said this because they were afraid of the Judean leaders. The leaders had already agreed that no one was to have anything to do with anyone who said that Jesus was the Messiah. The leaders called the man back and said, Swear by God to tell the truth. We know that this Jesus is a sinner. The man replied, I don't know if he is a sinner or not. All I know is that I used to be blind, but now I can see. What did he do to you? The Judean leaders asked. How did he heal your eyes? The man answered, I have already told you once, and you refuse to listen. Why do you want me to tell you again? Do you also want to become his disciples? The leaders insulted the man and said, You are his follower. We are followers of Moses. We are sure that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this Jesus comes from. How strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God listens only to people who love him and obey him. God does not listen to sinners. And this is the first time in history that anyone has ever given sight to someone born blind. Jesus could not do anything unless he came from God. The leaders told the man, You have been a sinner since the day you were born. Do you think you can teach us anything? Then they said, You can never come back into any of our meeting places. When Jesus heard what had happened, he went and found the man. Then Jesus asked, Do you have faith in the Son of Man? He replied, Sir, if you will tell me who he is, I will put my faith in him. You have already seen him, Jesus answered, and right now he is talking to you. The man said, Lord, I put my faith in you. Then he worshipped Jesus. Jesus told him, I came to judge the people of this world. I am here to give sight to the blind and to make blind everyone who can see. When the Pharisees heard Jesus say this, they asked, Are we blind? Jesus answered, If you were blind, you would not be guilty. But now that you claim to see, you will keep on being guilty. And a reading from the 18th chapter of St. John's Gospel, which shall serve as the text for our meditation today. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Judeans replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Judeans? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Judean, am I? Your own nation and your chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my followers would keep me from being handed over to the Judeans. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. 
Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Judeans again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you after Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Judeans? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Anyone who has ever served as a juror or even just watched a courtroom drama on TV is familiar with the oath which witnesses take before giving testimony. Our legal system is based on the belief that there is such a thing as the truth, and that by finding the truth, guilt or innocence can be determined. In order to arrive at the truth, a witness is examined by a prosecuting attorney and a defense attorney. The goal of such an examination is to arrive at the truth. That said, sometimes trials end with an admission that the truth may never be known with complete certainty. Such is the unfortunate reality of our human legal system. Yet what is even more unfortunate is that many people carry that same type of uncertainty over into spiritual matters. People like Pontius Pilate. Pilate expressed his doubt about the existence of absolute truth, a doubt expressed by so many in this postmodern age today. Pilate phrased it this way, he said, What is truth? As dawn broke on Friday morning, the sham trial of Jesus of Nazareth before the high priest Caiaphas came to an end. Caiaphas and the religious leaders had falsely ruled that Jesus had blasphemed and deserved to die. However, the religious leaders had no legitimate authority to put a criminal to death. Thus, a handful of the religious leaders made their way to the palace of Governor Pilate with Jesus in tow. When Jesus was initially brought forward, Pilate told the angry folks to try Jesus according to their own religious laws. But then Pilate's interest was piqued when Pilate heard that Jesus had supposedly declared himself a king. Such a declaration sounded like treason, a serious charge which would require a Roman trial. Thus Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Judeans? Jesus' response to that question indicated that Jesus is indeed a king, but not the kind of king that Pilate thought. You are right in saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Truly, Jesus is a king. Jesus is the king of kings, in fact. Jesus is a king who rules through the power of his word, his word, which is the truth. Jesus said, You are right in saying that I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. In other words, Jesus told Pilate, If you are actually interested in knowing the truth, then turn to me. Listen to me, and then you will know the truth. Here, as on other occasions, Jesus pointed to himself as the source of the truth, 
the truth about God and about God's will for all. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus' answer to Pilate's skeptical question is, My word is truth. For this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. The truth. It almost sounds like something quaint in our society and in our world right now, in the midst of chaos and crisis. And yet, as followers of Jesus, no matter what is happening right now outside our doors, we hang on to the truth. We hang on to the truth of Jesus, knowing that all who believe in Jesus receive the forgiveness of all of their brokenness and wrongdoing, and all those who believe in Jesus are guaranteed a place in his heavenly kingdom forever. People of God, that is the truth, the truth of God, the truth which is not relative, the truth which is not subject to change, the truth which defies the chaos and all circumstances around us in our world this day. Cling to that truth, the truth. And then no matter what might happen in the days ahead, bring that truth, the truth to bear, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Let us pray. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender, race, or economic status. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to lands suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, therapists, and all who tend to human bodies, especially during this crisis. God of insight, help St. Matthew's Church lift up the unique gifts of each person who enters, no matter their physical capability, cognitive ability, or sensory need. Help us to be creative and brave in making our ministries accessible to all, even in times of change such as this. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus our Savior. Amen. And now, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you all, now and forever, wherever you might be, for though we are apart, we are together, and we are one. Amen.